Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar, and we have a very special guest with us today, Ms. Leah Karras. Leah, welcome to The Jewish View. Thank you. Well, if we can see here, you are the publisher of Yalda Magazine, and we wanted to talk about that. Actually, you're a very young woman, and... Um, didn't start even a half a year ago, which would be an accomplishment itself. Some people publish things that they're 30, they have so much experience, they're 30, 40 years old, and they get into publishing uh, business. And you started very young, so tell us about how you got into it and even how young you were. So I was actually 12 when I started brainstorming the idea for Yalda Magazine, and 13 when the first issue came out. And how I got into it really was that I enjoyed writing, I enjoyed reading magazines, and I was looking for a magazine that spoke to me as a Jewish girl. And I was a big fan of American Girl magazine. I really liked the style of the articles and everything, but I wanted something that talked about Jewish holidays, Jewish values, and that connected me to other Jewish girls around the world. So I started brainstorming the idea for Yalda, which is the Hebrew word for girl. I started thinking what types of articles I would want to read. So there's everything from babysitting tips to crafts for Rosh Hashanah to stories about Jewish women and interviews with inspiring Jewish girls. So for a full year I pulled together articles that mostly I wrote. I got a few of my friends involved. I taught myself graphic design in order to design the magazine. I took the cover photos and really learned on the job. I did a lot of Googling, a lot of asking questions of how to set up a business, how to open a bank account and set up a website. But after a full year, uh, when I was 13, the first issue came out. And I was so excited to be holding that you know, glossy magazine finally in my hands. Um, and I really just started out handing it out to my friends at school, selling it to my teachers and very, very quickly the word spread. So after a few days that it was out, there was an article in my local Jewish newspaper. I'm actually originally from Sharon, Massachusetts, so it was the Boston Jewish Advocate. And once that article was out, our orders started coming in, people started telling their friends about it, and within a few weeks I was getting phone calls of people you know, asking to order over the phone and wanting to give gift subscriptions to their granddaughters and nieces and those 150 copies that we printed of the first issue sold out very quickly we had to print more and we then continued on to printing the next issue um, after that I got an editorial board of girls involved so the way the magazine runs now is that I oversee everything and this editorial board of 20 girls ages 8 to 15 from around the country and a few other countries as, as well uh, they brainstorm all the articles that go in it they write them they illustrate they take the photos um, so it's really f for girls by girls and um, it's been going for just about eight years now so we've been expanding and it's been a real adventure and I've learned so much from the whole publishing experience that I just kind of jumped into. What have you really have um, special articles you can tell us about? I mean just about that something is geared for Jewish girls that you feel is for Jewish girls different than just like American girls. Yeah, I mean, one thing is that we'll definitely talk about the Jewish holidays, um, everything from crafts to, you know, tips for an easy fast on Yom Kippur to, you know, ideas of uh, creative Hanukkah menorahs. Um, and then there are also general articles, like we've had an article about leadership. And sometimes what we'll do is we'll throw in, you know, who were important Jewish leaders or what does the Torah say about leadership qualities. Um, so we try to sometimes, you know, make a, a connection like that. And then often what we're doing is we're just profiling other Jewish girls and, sh you know, sharing interesting situations they're in. Um, for example, we just did an article about what's it like to have your mother as your teacher. So we interviewed a few different Jewish girls whose mothers have been their teachers. Um, we also have a section called Real Role Model where we'll profile Jewish girls who are either 
doing a really nice charity project or stood up for their Jewish belief in some way or you know made a difference um, so that's something we really like to try to focus on really positive role models and connecting to other Jewish girls and really giving girls the feeling that they're part of this community that they're flipping through the pages they're you know seeing all the different articles written by girls profiling girls um, and we really do get that feedback the girls feel like they're part of something bigger than just their local community it's excellent well I you know been following you for many years of course I have few girls myself and they're subscribers but I saw that you actually want to a national prize what was it a few years ago now yeah it was about four years ago and that was a very exciting time for the magazine um, I had been running the magazine for about four years at the time and we mostly tried to cover our our budget by getting some ads getting some sponsors but it was very tight and at that point we were really low on funds and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to continue um, and my mother is a writer and she saw a contest sponsored by Wells Fargo um, called Someday Stories and it was if you could win a hundred thousand dollars what would your someday story be what would you do with that so she submitted an essay saying how she would sponsor and help grow her daughter's magazine that she had started at age 13 and I was I, you know, she mentioned that she had written this article, she submitted it, I kind of forgot about the contest, and then later that year, while I was actually in camp, I got a phone call, and she said, are you sitting down? And I said, no, I'm actually on a trip, and she said, well, I just found out that we're one of the five finalists in this contest, and just for being a finalist, we won $10,000 and Wells Fargo came out to my house made a whole video about the magazine how it got started and actually took me in a ride around my neighborhood in their iconic Wells Fargo stagecoach um, so that was out of 10,000 people that entered I was one of the five finalists and then the next phase of the contest was the voting phase so between those five finalists they opened voting to the public and said that whoever gets the most votes in about a six week period would win the hundred thousand dollar prize so that was a very exciting and also very stressful time of course um, and we went all out campaigning getting all our readers to tell their friends about voting a lot of jewish organizations put out a call to everyone you know please vote for this jewish girl um, and until the end it was very tight um, but we did pull through. We got 28,000 votes, and I they announced Yalda as the winner of their Someday Stories contest. So at that point, we they flew me and my mother out to San Francisco. There was a whole award ceremony and another ride around down the streets of San Francisco in the Wells Fargo stagecoach, and they presented me with a check for $100,000. So that was a real blessing exactly when I needed it and that really is what pushed the magazine forward. We were able to expand to ex uh, publishing books for Jewish girls as well. So we have two books out so far for girls and we made the magazine longer, we made it glossier, we were able to hire some staff and uh, really took the burden off this constant fundraising that I had been doing at that point. Um, so now four years later you know we we still need funds you know hundred thousand dollars doesn't go so far in the publishing world um, but that was really an exciting time and a huge blessing that enabled me to be able to continue this and bring it to what it is today it's excellent what are your goals for the future though I mean you know you have so many subscriptions to to this magazine how often do you even um, publish it so right now we publish it monthly and this is actually a new expansion that we've done uh, for the first seven years it was quarterly so we were coming out four times a year and just this past spring we decided to take the leap all our readers had constantly been telling us we want it more often we don't see it enough uh, so we decided that we're going to go monthly. So now it comes out 10 times a year. We are off for the summer, so we don't do uh, July and August. But otherwise, we're monthly, and we've just been getting great feedback from our readers that they're so excited to be seeing the magazine more often. 
Um, but in terms of the future, I definitely would like to continue putting out more books for girls as well. Um, we've taken a little pause on that, you know, marketing well, the books writes, we have. Who writes? Were you say putting them out? Yeah. Who, who, where did you get the writers? So the first book we have is called The Alda Year, and it's a book of crafts and recipes connected to the Jewish holidays that actually I put together with a friend of mine. Um, our second book is a full-fledged fiction novel um, geared for Jewish girls, but also applicable to any girl. Um, and that, I mentioned my mother is a writer, so I commissioned her to write our first fiction novel. I bugged her and bugged her, and she kept telling me, no, I don't know, I'm writing other projects, I'm doing other things. Finally, I came to her with a contract, and I said, here's the book I want you to write, you know, here's when I need it by, here's the, you know, what I'll do as the publisher, and she agreed. So um, that came out about two years ago. It's called One Is Not a Lonely Number, and it's available from Amazon. Um, so yeah, we're looking for, we're always looking for books, mo probably written by adults, but some, we've had some fantastic submissions from talented girls as well. Um, so in the future, I would you know, like to continue with some more books. Um, I also, a lot of people have asked me for a kind of older sister magazine for uh, teens, because this is geared more for ages 8 to 15. So maybe in the future at some point we would also expand up to a you know, 15 to 18 year old magazine, something like that. Um, but right now I'm really focusing on expanding the magazine as it is now for the girls it targets now. Expanding what, subscription or just yeah, the size of it? Yeah, expanding subscriptions. We have expanded the size and, like I said, expanding the frequency. Um, and one thing we've also recently done is we expanded our website. So we actually put articles now available on the website for girls to read and comment on. And we have a group of girl bloggers who each have their own blog on our website. So some of them write about fashion tips, some have a photography blog, some of them write about the weekly Torah portion. Um, so that really also provides a lot of content on our website and it's another way for girls to interact with each other, build this community of Jewish girls. Um, so that's also been another way that we've expanded the magazine to kind of give more content in between each issue. Do you know, like, I mean, maybe the demographics of your subscribers are they day school, Jewish-minded kids also, or you get kids that are really just maybe on the fringes of, if we can say, of the Jewish observance, but, you know, they're getting them interested in Jewish things? I was, when I first made the magazine, actually, I was, I was gearing it for observant girls because I felt like they didn't have a magazine. Um, but I was very pleasantly surprised by the response I got from girls from all spectrums of Jewish life. Um, so I'd say the majority of our readers do have, you know, are affiliated. They either, you know, might go to a Jewish day school or, you know, regularly go to a after school, Hebrew school kind of thing. Um, we have many Orthodox readers and many non-Orthodox readers. Um, and there are some girls that have just heard about it and, you know, subscribed or picked it up in Barnes & Noble. and gotten involved in it. Um, so we've had some really nice, inspiring letters that girls have written about how Yalda has inspired them and impacted them to be more involved in Jewish life. And we've even had a few non-Jewish readers who have subscribed and written letters and said, you know, I was just intrigued by this story of this 13-year-old who published a magazine. You know, I wanted to see it. I find it interesting. Uh, so we really have a very wide spectrum of, of readers. Very good. Uh, what about the potential? I mean, how many girls do you think? I mean, guess how many <laughs> girls in America? But I'm just saying, there's so many really day school girls. I mean, do you have even a figure? I'm just asking um, for in New York City. Right. I mean, we I would, would think that most girls, maybe you know, should or <laughs> right. you know, or it would be a nice thing for any girl. But I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's a glitch market. You know, it's a yeah, it but definitely. But on the other hand, there must be some number that you're looking at. Yeah, we definitely have not tapped into the whole market at all. Um, we would definitely like to get up to five or even ten thousand readers. I think we definitely could reach ten thousand readers. Um, just in terms of day schools, from my research, there are about a hundred thousand Jewish girls in day schools in the U.S. 
Um, so if we could reach 10% of that or, you know, also you reach know, some schools, other like Hebrew schools, you. exactly. Um, I would, you know, our goal really would be to get up to 10,000. And I just was looking through it before. as actually <laughs> some interesting articles also, but they, for myself, and I'm not a Jewish girl, but, um, I mean, the advertisement, does that look like a future idea? Is that a reason you don't want advertisement or you... We have gotten some advertisements. Um, we've gone through sometimes where we had someone sitting, calling companies, meeting with them, and then sometimes where I did it, sometimes where I was just too busy. So we haven't really been able to focus on that. So you'll see some issues. There's two or three ads. Some issues there's none. Some issues there might even be six or so, but we haven't really gotten more than that. Um, but I think if we really could expand our readership more and get up to those you know, few thousand numbers, uh, it could be a very, you know, good place, the, really the only way to reach this niche market of Jewish girls in terms of anything from bat mitzvah gifts to fashion and accessories, to, food, you know, food, food, kosher food, food yeah. exactly. Um, so I do think there is potential there. Well, that's excellent over here. So, I mean, the Yalda magazine is, you know, uh, good for everywhere but it's specifically you're in Albany now yeah, so right. I think that's a compliment to the Jewish community in Albany to, to attract a person like yourself what brought you to Albany um so we I lived in Massachusetts and then when I got married I lived in Brooklyn for a year and after a year I knew that I had grown up in a small town kind of place and I was looking to get out of of the city um, and I had been involved in the Jewish Girls Retreat that's run out of Troy here by Nechama Labor. Um, so I had been to Albany many times. I had gotten to know people in the community through the retreat. Um, I had actually been a counselor there for about seven years. So I'd really built up a connection with the retreat um, and I'm con I continue to be involved. So, you know, we were, we were open to, to places, but Albany, we liked the feeling of it. We liked that it was still a close enough drive to New York. It's not, you know, moving cross country. Um, and we're very happy to be here now that we're able to uh, help out with the Jewish Girls Retreat. And we spent the summer there. Um, I was the program director and my husband actually was the chef. Uh, so we had a joint effort there. Um, so yeah, that's really what brought us to Albany. And we're very happy to be here and looking forward to uh, connecting to Jewish girls in Albany and you know, getting the magazine 